Good Friday morning, everybody. Chris here with High Seas Cruising, and welcome to today's video. Got several cruise news stories for you today, but we're going to start off with a new port setting limitations on cruises. As cruises become more popular heading to places like Iceland, it is an exotic destination that people are excited to travel to. But as we've seen with other cruise ports, as the number of cruise ship passengers arrive there, the number of cruises that want to schedule stops there, we begin to see limitations on the number of people, the number of ships that can arrive. And now, Istafiro to Iceland, well, they have set some limitations as well. They are going to be capping cruises at no more than 5,000 passengers per day, and the ships will no longer be allowed to blow their horn while entering and exiting the port. Now, according to the local facilities, this isn't anything against cruise ships. It isn't anything against cruise passengers. They simply do not have the infrastructure built up yet to handle more cruise passengers at this time. They want cruise ships. They welcome the cruise ship passengers. And they say over time, as the infrastructure continues to build, the cruise lines begin to invest more into the cruise port, then they'll be able to welcome more cruise passengers. But by setting policies now, they safeguard the long-term relationships between the locals there and with the cruising industry. Gives them the opportunity to slowly and gradually build up the relationships between locals and cruise passengers. Next up, the cruise ship Celestial Journey. Well, she struck the cruise pier in Turkey this past Monday. They said she was coming in a little too quickly, made an attempt to reduce speed, even dropped her anchor in an attempt to slow down. However, the bow of the ship did still strike the dock, causing minor damage to both the ship and the dock. However, no injuries were reported with this collision. We do have a video of the collision. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the video. All right, so you could see her coming in. You heard and saw where the anchor splashed down. It was kind of at the last minute, and you could hear the ship make contact with the dock. Like I said, no injuries reported, and just minor damage to both the ship and the dock. Now we have two cruise cancellations from MSC. The May 30th, 2025 sailing of the MSC Magnifica, and the August 24th, 2025 sailing of the MSC Seascape. Guests on board those cruises have been notified of the cancellations, and MSC is citing operational requirements, redeployment of their ships. Guests will have the option to automatically have their crews move to a similar sailing. They will have the option to either rebook to another MSC sailing or the option for a full refund. Next, we're gonna jump over to Carnival Cruise Lines and talk about the Carnival Pride. The Carnival Pride is currently on a 12-day repositioning cruise going from Tampa, Florida, supposed to be going to Baltimore where she was going to disembark. And when the Carnival Pride sailed, it was still kind of up in the air. Was she actually going to be able to go to Baltimore? Was she actually going to be able to disembark her passengers and even those currently sailing on the ship they did not know when they departed Tampa exactly where they were going to go initially Carnival said they expected to go to Baltimore they believed that the port was going to be open now after discussions with Baltimore it has now been determined instead she is gonna have to go to Norfolk so on April the 21st Carnival Pride will be going to Norfolk Virginia she will disembark her passengers there as well as embark the passengers for her next sailing. 
Carnival will be providing bus transportation to the four major airports in the area. Norfolk International, Baltimore Washington International, Reagan National, and Dulles. For those guests that need to rearrange their flights, Carnival is offering free 24 hours of internet access on board the ship to make those arrangements and is also offering up to $200 for those that have non-refundable air transportation fees. Now for those embarking on the ship on April the 21st, they have also been notified of the change. There will also be shuttle bus services provided, but they are asked to go on and register that they're going to need one of these shuttle buses in advance. They said space is limited so you do have to register. Now, how soon the Carnival Pride is going to go back to Baltimore? That's still up in the air. For now, at least, if you are sailing on any ship scheduled to go out of Baltimore, such as the Carnival Pride, plan ahead for at least for the time being that you're going to be embarking and disembarking in Norfolk at least until Carnival comes out and says 100% for sure we are moving back to Baltimore. And finally, we're going to see some price changes all across the Carnival Corporation brands. Now, these are not a price increases, but if you look at it starting on July the 1st and you don't know about this change, you're going to think it's a price increase. It's not, but it is going to look different when you go into book cruises after July the 1st. Now, the reason for this is there is a new California Consumer Protection Law. And essentially, this law says you cannot advertise a price at the beginning and then have a different price at the end. The price they see up front must include all taxes and fees. Those that already booked their own cruises know you see a price on there. It says $200 per person per night. You go through and book the cruise, and then at the end, it adds the port fees and taxes. So it is higher than the $200 per person. Well, this new California law stops them from being able to do that, and the price up front now has to include all the taxes and fees. And while this law is only in California, Carnival has said we're going to do this for all of our cruise bookings in the United States and Canada. That way there's no confusion. That way there's not one price for California and then a different price for everybody else. So we are going to see this fleet wide. You will see this change on Princess Cruise Lines, Carnival Cruise Lines, Holland America, Costa, and Cunard North America. So again, after July the 1st, you will see a jump in the price of a cruise. You will see a change. Just know that that now includes the port fees and taxes. So what you see at the beginning should be what you see when you total out on that cruise. Now, of course, that doesn't count travel insurance or any other extras that you put in there. But at the beginning, if you see the price per cruise is $200 per person, at the end when you check out, it will be $200 per person beginning after July the 1st. And we just want to put that information out there because, like I said, some people won't know. They will see the price jump. They will see the price increase, and it will automatically be assumed, hey, the cruise lines have once again raised prices. Cruise lines are notorious for raising prices. But in this case, it is simply that they must put the total price at the beginning. So far, Carnival is the only one that has announced that this is what they're doing. But it will affect all cruise lines sailing out of California, so it only makes sense that at some point, all of them will go to this new pricing structure to the all-included price up front versus a advertised price, then the port fees and taxes add, added at the end. Now, personally, I think this simplifies things for cruisers. You can see what the price is going to be. You then don't have to go through the booking to see how much more tax, port fees and taxes will be. You'll know up front exactly what that cruise is going to cost per person. So to me, I think it actually makes things simpler for cruisers. I think it makes things easier to understand, especially for new cruisers. I think it takes away the people that say, well, yeah, they advertise this price, but look at all these hidden costs that come up before you get to the end. It will take all of that away. So at least in my opinion, I don't know. I like it. I think it's a good idea. I'd like to know up front exactly what the price is. But what do you guys think? How do you feel about this price change? Or should I say, how do you feel about the way they must advertise the price? Because that's actually what it is. It's a change in the way they advertise the price. It's not actually a price increase, and it's not a price change. But I'm curious, what do you guys think about this new law? And that's going to be our cruise news for today. I hope everyone out there is having a really great day. And like always, we'll see you out on the high seas.